I am now joined by a man that's going to step back inside the Bellator cage. Bellator 219. It's the caveman, David Rickles. David, how's it going, man? What's up, man? It's good. Very, very good to chat with you. It's it's been a long time, and uh, I want to kind of start off with. I mean, everyone knows you are you are the definition of a Bellator veteran. What do you remember about your Bellator debut back in uh, October of two thousand and eleven? Um, I remember none of my friends could watch it because it was on MTV two. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Um, shit, was that who did I debut against? Uh, that was uh, Levi Bill Avera. Smith? Levi, oh shoot! Yeah, the dude I just made a bloody mess. That was a good time. Yeah, that was a really good time. I mean, like when you think about how you've grown as a martial artist from back in 2011 to now, what what what's the one thing that sticks out to you? Um, you know what the one of the funny things that um, you know, I you know mentally I feel like I'm starting to feel like a veteran. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed personally is like, I'm just starting to feel comfortable in that cage. Like, shit, I've been here a thousand times, man. Like this ain't nothing different. You know what I mean? So, uh, I think that like veteran mentality is finally starting to kick in and, um, you know, it feels good. What's the difference in, in having a veteran mentality? Um, you know, I don't know. Like, I think of like, you know, guys like, uh, Jeremy Stevens and Donald Cerrone, it's kind of that fucking attitude of like, uh, man, like just whatever happens is going to happen out here. Like let's put on a fucking show and have a good time. And I, I feel like that's a great way to describe this match between you and AJ. I, I think there's no, everyone kind of knows going to this matchup, what we should expect. And, uh, I mean, I, I you know, action pack, you know, great. I know you use the word on IG, just a great scrap. Is that about the best way to describe this matchup? Man, I, you know, me and me and AJ have actually, <laughs> actually, that's so funny. When I fought Levi Avera, uh, we were, after the fight, we were talking to um, uh, AJ's Matthew, AJ Matthews' uh, manager at that time, and AJ's manager was like, whoop de whoop blah, 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 like uh, AJ would whip your ass, blah, blah, blah. You need to fight him, this and that. And we were like, shit, bring it on, you know? And so X amount of years later, what, I don't know, six, seven, eight years later, here we go. Have you ever had a another fighter's manager start trash talking you? Uh, No. Well, I actually wasn't there. My coach was there, and they about got into a fist fight. Um, from what I had heard, and it, it was pretty funny, but you know, the funniest part about it actually is that like me and AJ Matthews have a lot of respect for each other. We're hella cool. Um, I've enjoyed watching his fights and you know, I think vice versa. So, uh, I think it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. Uh, you know, I'm definitely looking to put him away. Um, I feel like I'm a better fighter, so and I'm sure he feels the same way. So we're about to find out. I mean, speaking of your coaching staff, I remember uh, watching your fight against Guillermo Bamba, where it was going to the third round, and your coach goes, "Do you want this or not?" And, and I, I was sitting there, and, and I don't know if it was on the Paramount broadcast, but it was definitely on the DAZN broadcast. And I'm sitting there going, "Like, why don't we hear that more from coaches?" Because he just felt like he was just being Man. brutally honest with you. Yeah, for sure. No, 100%, man. And uh, that's something that, um, you know, uh, me and my coach, as we watch fighters, we sometimes get confused. Like, why the fuck are his cornermen not telling him, like, dude, you have to give, you have to knock this dude out? Like, oh, those were close rounds. No, they weren't. You got your ass whooped for two rounds. You got to win this third. What are you doing? You know, uh, so uh, we've always been big on the brutally honest, like, just tell me what the fuck is going on in there. So, you know, I was mentioning about your IG account and, and uh, you know, you'd had a, this picture up with your daughter holding a, a cake of uh, EFC. And I, I thought it was interesting. You said that your love for combat sports started with the WWE. So, like, do you remember, like, the first time you kind of saw it? When I first watched WWE? Yeah. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, it no, was it, WWF at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of what what about what you saw made you realize you had a love for combat sports? Uh, well, you know, I started watching so early that, like, when I was watching 
wrestling, I thought it was real. So, you know, you're talking like I was eight, nine years old. And, man, you know, when I watched those wrestlers out there, like, that was real to me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted so bad to be one of those guys. Like, uh, you know, and this is before I'd ever seen really any boxing or any fighting at all. So, you know, I had nothing to compare it to. And uh, just that, like, whipping somebody's ass mentality, like, uh, you know, the trash talk, the entertainment of it, the walkouts, the music. Uh, I mean, it was just the most entertaining thing I could think of as a kid, and um, I definitely fell in love with it. Now, of course, everyone knows you for, you know, the great, you know, walkouts, but, you know, you're you're coming into, you know, AJ's home state. You know, you're not uh, in, in your hometown area. I mean, are you still kind of planning on doing something uh, special that the fans need to make sure they tune in on, on DAZN and, and Bellator.com? Dude, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, everybody will be able to relate to this next walkout. Uh, everyone, you know, hey, I might be in AJ's place, but people will give me some respect for this walkout, and uh, it's going to be fun. I've been looking forward to doing this one. So, You get the win here. That, that'll that be two in a row. Uh, ha- have you mapped out uh, what you want this year to be? Yeah, I just want to get wins and stack paper and – pay off debts and shit. I just bought a new house. Things are looking good. Caveman's life as well. Um, you know, as far as the fight game goes, like right now, um, I still am like very passionate. Like I love training. Um, like when I'm not in the gym, I feel like I'm missing out on something. I'm missing out on opportunities to learn uh, new things. Um, I'm still hiring. Like I just hired a new striking coach who's been helping me. Um you know, I'm still trying to get better. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I think the when I say I've adopted the the veteran mentality, it's not that like you know I'm not uh, out here trying to get wins and stuff, and I don't care if I win or lose. Like I most definitely want to win, but I'm just starting to feel comfortable in the cage, and um, it feels really good. What was there was there something that that's happened recently to where you, you realize you need to bring in a new striking coach? I got my ass whipped by MVP, bro. <laughs> so, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I you know, I actually, if I could be honest with myself, it, with him, you know, he was definitely uh, on point that night and very good. But, man, my, my, I was mentally not where I needed to be for that fight. Um, you could tell by me walking out in the second round. Um, I had a lot of shit going on. But, um, you know, outside of that, like, I was like, man, I need to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to keep fighting, I'm not going to fight like that. I'll tell you that. Because that was like, in my, uh, you know, in my view of myself as a fighter, like, that's the last thing I want to ever do and be seen as. So I was like, man, if, if we're ever going to have a performance like that again, we don't need to fight anymore. Um, and I need to figure out what it's going to take to get back on the right track. And, you know, I, I felt like I had a really good showing against Galerme. And um, I think that I'm going to have a good showing here against Fiji as well. I mean, like, do you, would you say like, were you at like a crossroads type moment of like, man, I, I got to make something now yeah. or this just isn't going to happen? No, nah, I mean, it was a crossroads of like, dude, are you doing this for fucking money or are you uh, are you really wanting to fight? Like, do you still want to bite down on your mouthpiece and get fucking mean with grown-ass men who want to do the same shit to you? So, uh, yeah, like, it was that. Like, are you just doing this for a paycheck or do you still have passion for this game? And, you know, I figured out, man, that, like, I'm just very passionate still. You know, it kind of, like, I don't know, man. You you kind of have up and downs in the fight game and just like life in general. And, um, you know, I kind of needed to get my ass whipped to to get back on the burner and, and start working on things again. Yeah, a final thing. When you watched Paige versus Paul Daly, were you like the rest of us and just were amazed oh by what was actually – I mean, because I, I was there at Mohegan. I – you know, it was one of those things that into us that either this thing's going to be action packed or it's going to be a twenty five minute not exciting fight for you. Like as you're sitting there watching it, like as a fighter, what was going through your mind? Especially as a fighter who like was matched up against him, 
Um, and all my coaches, everybody was like, bro, if you wrestle, this is an easy fight. And I was like, fuck that. I'm going to strike with them. <laughs> and like, in hindsight, I'm like, man, you know, I wish I would have shot a goddamn double leg or something. You know what I mean? But cause I'm sorry, but Paul Daly is not a well-known wrestler. You know what I'm saying? And very well, it could have been the strategy, like, hey, I'm going to throw him off. I'm a striker. I'm going to wrestle. But, but it worked. And, you know, obviously not enough. He didn't win the fight. But but uh, I think that it exposed a huge hole in MVP. And uh, it was, man, I'll tell you, being there, it was uh, one of the weirdest nights covered in the sport, to be honest with you, man. It just was weird. Just a weird night. But, uh but look forward to seeing your fight here yeah, come up, yeah. uh, coming up on March 29th, Bellator 219. Dave, man, as always, I appreciate time, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that walkout, man. Thank you.